New Year, new Falcons team, baby. Let's go. It's 2022. We are about to beat the freaking Bills of all teams, and we are going to make the playoff. First to go at the four. Singletary turning forward into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Oh, nope. It's, it, I forgot. It's the same old Falcons team every single freaking time. What's going on, Falcons fans? Logan here. Happy New Year. It is finally 2022. I hope you all have an amazing new year. There are so many opportunities out there for you, whether you believe it or not. So many opportunities to become the best version of you in a brand new year of 2022. I am rooting for you. I know you can do it. Make it an amazing 2022, everyone. And may the best be yet to come for you all. Now, in this video, I do first off want to apologize for ever since last week, the videos have been kind of all over the place. Like, it's just, I, I'm trying not to make excuses, but the schedule I had has been a little busy because um, I had to go out of state and then I had to go back to my home state, but not to my hometown and then I had to go back to my hometown and then I got sick and then now I'm getting ready for another trip and then I'm gonna go out of state like it's kind of really crammed but no excuses I guess uh, nonetheless I do have to give away some awesome Falcons content and in this video it's the perfect opportunity to give away my honest opinion on you know the the Falcons finally being eliminated from playoff contention as I'm sure we all kind of saw it coming, but it still does hurt. Um, and in this video, I don't, I didn't prepare for it at all. I didn't have any notes. I didn't have any, uh, anything really. It's just whatever comes to the top of my head because, hey, I think everyone likes honesty more than anything. So here are my honest thoughts on the Atlanta Falcons missing out on the playoffs and what I think they should do moving forward, really just at first glance. Um, on the bright side, I'll go over the positives first. Um, at least we don't have to stress about making the playoffs or not. Like, the, the playoff picture is officially out of the picture for us, but we don't have to stress about it anymore. We don't have to be like, oh, man, if we just get help from the Eagles, if we get help from, you know, someone. Uh, no, it, we don't have to do that anymore. We can just hope that we can beat the Saints, and that's it. Like, hey... At least we can just finish up the season and we could play spoiler to the Saints and we could spoil their season. That's one amazing way to finish the season. And we don't have, like, what do we have to lose? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, and then another positive thing is that I think we have, what, the, the 10th spot in the draft, somewhere around there. It definitely looks like we'll be picking pretty early in the draft, which is pretty good considering that we got around seven to maybe eight wins in the season. Uh, and keep in mind, Dan Quinn's first season as the Atlanta Falcons head coach, he got eight wins and he picked like top eight. So I don't know, like it kind of looks like maybe we might get the same exact situation with Arthur Smith where we're picking early and get around eight wins, uh, maybe potentially, uh, definitely close. And then uh, another positive is that, hey, there's a lot of talent to work with more than we thought there was, like we had Grady Jarrett, and then Foye Lewican, AJ Terrell got snubbed from the Pro Bowl, just saying, but, uh, and then Cordero Patterson, some people are saying he might not get signed, but if that is true, that is a huge mistake, and that is going to be the worst 2022 imaginable, so let's hope that doesn't happen, and then Kyle Pitts, uh, hopefully you could get Matt Ryan going, uh, it, it, you know, there's some talent to work with. Um, so it's really not all, uh, I've seen this floating around on Twitter. It's not all doom and gloom, I guess, uh, because there's something to work with. And I absolutely, and I know I feel like I say this in like every single video, but I absolutely love what Arthur Smith brings in as a head coach. I think he was very clearly the right hire. Um, and I think he's brought in a good culture. Like, in years past with Dan Quinn, ever since 2018, you just didn't really see the team get hyped up when something good happened. And if something bad happened, you just never really saw them lift each other up. This year, 
the complete opposite. If there's a great thing that happened, I see them all dancing and having fun and celebrating. And then when something goes wrong, they're like uplifting each other. And Arthur Smith just yelling at the players to get disciplined. Don't celebrate just getting, you know, a second down and five. Like some, like something kind of silly like that. But hey, it sounds like Arthur Smith is, you know, a really good head coach. And I guess we'll just have to see what else he can do. And uh, we'll also have to see what more Terry Fontenot is capable of. But not a bad first year for him with Kyle Pitts and Richie Grant showing some promise. And you get the idea. Uh, so the new guys, I guess, overall for the Falcons are looking good. And uh, some veterans to work with as well. And um, I guess the division rivals are kind of like maybe sinking to the floor a little bit. Not the Buccaneers, but the Saints. Like, yeah, yeah, you could argue that it was just the Jameis Winston injury that made them go downhill. Which, yeah, could be true. But, I mean, I don't know. Like, it, it, it might be hard for the Saints to find a, a, a franchise quarterback to help them go forward. Jameis Winston's okay, but he's not a franchise quarterback. I think that's safe to say. So uh, the Saints might kind of be on the same level as us, uh, how they're kind of like in the middle, like they're in the mix to get in the playoffs. So at least they're not like the top dogs like they were in the years past for the NFC South. And then the Panthers are looking like an absolute joke. So uh, the Falcons have even more opportunities down the stretch to, I guess, get second in the division because let's just face it, we're never going to beat Tom Brady, apparently. Uh, but uh, the, the truth is I could go on and on about the positives, uh, but I think you get the idea. Uh, basically, to uh, bullet point the positives and keep it short, I like what Arthur Smith is bringing in, and I think he's got a culture. Uh, there's some talent to work with, and... The division rivals kind of looks like the Saints and Panthers are kind of going downhill a little bit, especially the Panthers. So we have a little bit of a chance to become at least a wild card in the playoffs and years down the road. Uh, but there also are some negatives, I will admit. Uh, while I did also say that there is some talent to work with, I also won't shy away from saying that there is also a lot of things to fix on this roster. I mean, the the safety situation, Jalen Hawkins and Richie Grant did show some promise, but, you know, like, it's not a guarantee. So the safety situation, in my opinion, is still kind of a question mark. And then cornerback number two is definitely a question mark. Like, we know who cornerback one is, but Isaiah Oliver, I don't know if you should keep him. And then uh, Fabian Moreau, no. Anyone else? Bunch of no-names you got to get a good corner number two. Everyone's talking about how the Falcons should get the corner from uh, Cincinnati, I guess. Uh, I admit that I haven't really looked at anyone's college tape, but, like, um, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if he's even going to be available when the Falcons are picking, but we'll see. But, hey, um, if we are to get another good corner, I'm okay with it. The Falcons are actually somewhat good at drafting corners. Desmond Trufant in his early years in Atlanta, and then A.J. Terrell... Uh, I, I, I guess Robert Alford, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, like, they're somewhat good with corner, so you never know. Uh, Deion Sanders way back. So the Falcons can kind of make some good corners here. You just have to hope that if they are to get anyone in this draft, because there are a lot of great defensive players in this draft, maybe we could have A.J. Terrell in another great corner. But I also do think that there is a much bigger problem than the secondary, and that would be the pass rush. Like, is it even a question? This is the absolute biggest question mark on this team. It is quite literally Grady Jarrett and no one. Quite literally. Dante Fowler, I'm done with him. Get him out. Marlon Davidson, I know he's in his second year. But how confident are you that he's seriously going to get better? They're going to keep him. And I guess that is kind of the right thing to do. Because I guess you just never know. But I'm not feeling so good about him. And then everyone else, bunch of no-names, don't care. We need a better pass rush ASAP. Like, literally not even a question. Again, like I said earlier, at least the defense is filled with great defensive players. So we have a good opportunity to get one. But at the same time... The Falcons have been an absolute joke of drafting pass rushers, apparently. Uh, say what you will about Tack McKinley and Vic Beasley, but 
it is safe to say that they just simply weren't who they were supposed to be in Atlanta. I, I don't think anyone's going to argue that. Uh, and then, who else? Like, Rashid Hageman. <laughs> like, really? And then, uh, uh, I'm sure there's someone else that was going to come to my head. I, I just can't think of it. But anyway, um, oh, yeah. Adrian Claiborne, you know, like, he showed up here and there. But, you know, like, what, what was he really going to do for us? Uh, it's a joke. We have got to fix that pass rush ASAP. And then surprisingly, a position that we kind of do need to fix pretty soon. I never thought I'd say it, but linebackers. Now, only one though, because I do like the potential that you got in Michael Walker. And then you know, just as well as I do, I am a huge Foya Iluokan stan. I'm not going to beat that to the bush. I think you all know my stance on him, but... Unfortunately, Deion Jones had a pretty bad season. I, I'm not even going to lie. He he really actually was pretty bad. Uh, and I've always been kind of lower on his tackling ability, I guess. Like, I always thought he was kind of like poor at tackling. And it was at an absolute low this season. His cover skills weren't even good this season. It, I mean, he just... It looks like he... I, I know he's not stealing money, but the tape... It, it, like, makes you think, like, why is he getting this, like, and I mean, no offense, obviously, because that's a hard job to do. I would be an absolute joke at it, but why is he getting paid this much? You know, like, it, it's just, it's not pretty. Uh, Deion Jones, I I think they maybe could move on from him. I actually can kind of see that po uh, uh, that being possible. We'll just see. I think the Falcons are kind of aware of it in a way, because... Um, the Falcons haven't really, you know, they haven't really made any big moves with their cap space. So I guess they were kind of just trying to evaluate who they have this year. And then maybe heading into the 2022 off season is when they get rid of whoever they didn't like. So I don't know, Deion Jones, it's looking scary, but, uh, we'll just see. Uh, and then of course, unfortunately the offensive line, it's the second biggest issue it's the both both line plays for the Falcons are an absolute joke. Defensive line and offensive line. Jalen Mayfield, poor guy. No one just wants to leave him alone. But he had a terrible freaking year, and nobody's gonna let him forget it. Apparently, especially that tweet saying, "If you don't want your QB hit, take me." Simple as that. Something like that. Poor freaking guy. I'm rooting for him. Like, give him some slack. It was his rookie year, but. It also was a pretty bad rookie year. I can't even lie. It was it was actually meme worthy, joke worthy. Like act everything that has to do with a joke, it would be named Jalen Mayfield. It was terrible. So if he does not improve in year two, that's an easy need at offensive line. His left guard, Jake Matthews. I like Jake Matthews, but he's not going to be with us for much longer, and unfortunately, he's not going to get any younger. So you. Gotta either win right now with him, or you maybe have to find his replacement really soon. Uh, center, Matt Hennessy, I'm done with him. Like, I don't see how he's going to get better. Got to get Drew Dahlman some snaps. Chris Lindstrom, great player. Caleb McGarry, done with him. So, there's a lot of things to fix with that offensive line. And then, even the receivers have been okay, but not the best. Uh, Alamene Sakia steps up for a little bit and then also proves that he's just not the the, uh, the white receiver that you need. And Russell Gage had a great second half of the 2021 season, but not anyone that I would say you can rely on 24-7, if that makes any sense. And I will continue to keep my mouth shut on Calvin Ridley because I respect you know, his uh, decision to leave and help his mental health. So I will not comment on that. But uh, Kyle Pitts and, you know, uh, Cordero Patterson are really the only uh, receivers that you basically had all year. That kind of shows you you need to get some receivers. And then running back. I love Cordero Patterson, but we also kind of need another running back behind him. Mike Davis, yeah, eh, he was all right, but... Not really worth bringing back. And Quadre Allison had some good moments. I will say that. Like, it, you know, he was better than he was in years past. But 
Again, not worth bringing back in my opinion. You got to find a running back. You get the idea. There's just so much to freaking fix on this team. That's really the only like glaring issue with this team. Because I think you got the coaching staff, even with Dean Pease, uh, and then you got the culture. It just... It's just the roster. Like, at least you don't have to start completely from scratch, but it's just, you have a long way to go, unfortunately. And we kind of knew that entering the year, but and I guess they did overachieve, which is good. But, you know, like when they played the Patriots and the, and the Cowboys and the Bills in at least the second half of the game, they show they basically suck. <laughs> like, it was really, really ugly. So there's a lot of things to fix, but um, I'm sure that if you give them just one, maybe two more years, then we could see a playoff team. Uh, so let's see what they do in the offseason and in the draft. Uh, they have uh, some things to work with and I guess a good draft position. So we'll see this team improve, but uh, playoffs, I guess it's a little too early to tell. But those are my honest opinions. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you wanted to know what would happen if the Falcons did make the playoffs, how would I feel? I would be excited. I really, really would. I would be just as hyped as you all. And I would be so grateful to see it happen. But I would never, ever pick them to beat anyone. They would get absolutely demolished in the first round. But, hey, it'd be cool because it would bo uh, boost up their culture and it would, you know, make them feel confident and they would love their life and everything, uh, if that makes any sense. But I, I don't think they would beat anyone. But the fact of the matter is, they did not make it, but they have some optimism moving forward. And that is all I got. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Other than that, I will see you guys with a video this Friday at 11 o'clock, 8 Eastern. Love and appreciate you all for the support. Be safe. And as always, rise up.